Good evening everyone, welcome to this week's video. Now I'm not sure if it's the fact that I filmed most of this today, then edited it, um, and I've then got to upload it still, and it's uh, not an early hour of the evening um, that I've decided that I fancy chatting through this video. Um, must be one of those like procrastination from sleep type things but it's been a while since I've done an art video where I've spoken over the top of it rather than just chucked on some music and uh, let you watch it and I felt like this was quite a good video just to explain not really explain just talk uh, I picked uh, four images to do a landscape study uh, this week I didn't really want to do the classic stuff I just wanted to pick some weird things, some things I'd never done before, something that I could practice and, you know, it's in my sketchbook, so I could, um, you know, mess around with it. I only realised about halfway through painting these that I kind of picked lots of murky and very, like, light, tense kind of backgrounds, which um, is why I've probably titled this video, I haven't got to titling it yet, but something to do with the murky sea. Um, this one here is going to be a wreck. I realised watching this, or watching it now, um, that I forgot to include the fish. But I am definitely far too lazy to go back over and put a fish on top of it. So um, if you saw fish drawn just then that I painted over, they, they are not at the end. But it was really cool to try and, and paint some murky landscapes because everything is either green or blue and a mixture of the two and it's you know it, it takes a lot for your brain not to paint what you think it is like for me not to paint this ship grey because it's not grey when it's under the water it doesn't look grey so but you know a ship in real life is grey and therefore your brain there's always this little bit of your brain that's like paint it this colour um, but you shouldn't because that's not what it looks like I really did have um, fun painting these four. This uh, one was definitely the most boring to paint. You'll see as it comes up later that it was just endless, endless, endless little of those things, little dabs and things that took a while, for even for such a small thing. But um, for those of you probably not sure what it is, it's not a coral reef, it is in fact a merl bed. I really like merl beds. I don't know a terrible amount about them, but they were one of the things that came up in my undergrad degree that I hadn't even heard of before and didn't know existed. Now when I say this next bit, I'm not saying that I knew everything. It's just when you're learning about the marine environment and you've watched documentaries before you did your undergrad and you've been around the sea, then you obviously don't know most of the facts, but you would have heard something to do with them like ocean currents we had a whole module on ocean currents i wouldn't know what those ocean currents were but i knew what an ocean current was mail beds were one of those things that we had a lecture on and i was like i have how have i never even heard that this is an ecosystem that exists and they're um mainly i think a european type of ecosystem they are uh basically um like coralline algae, if you've seen Coralina, that form very pathetic in terms of their ability to survive. They're not really attached to anything. It's kind of like fragments that sit at the bottom of the seabed, but they form a really complex habitat at the bottom of the sea, but not with a great amount of attachment. They have to be in the photic zone, um, so they do need a, a little bit of light, but they're mainly at the bottom of the seabed, which is why it's nice and green and murky in uh, this painting. But they are really awesome, very biodiverse, really linked into parts of the ecosystem, our nurseries and fishery habitats. And from what I can remember, you can get a hefty, hefty fine. And when I say you, I mean like a company or a dredger. If you disturb a merl bed, or do anything then you have to pay a fine I think every year that it would have taken and it's extremely slow growing like coral so every year it takes for it to get back to what it was you are paying a hefty sum of money um, so they are very protected environments and whenever they're found um, I think they get protected but that's going off what I can remember from my lectures so sorry if any of that is a bit outdated or wrong uh, I had a quick google and 
Um, there's not that much on male beds out there because it turns out that not a lot of people know that they exist either. Uh, I did this sketch in my moleskin A4 paper. I had used it to do watercolours before but I hadn't uh, used it to do like detailed watercolours and what I realised from this is you need to do layers and layers and layers and layers to capture the light. Uh, one pass at it is, is definitely not enough. So you can see there's a little bit of paper coming off there. And um, So I would recommend using that you can use Malkin. This is not a watercolour notebook, just their plain artistic one. You can use it for watercolour, but only watercolours that you're going to put maybe one layer, maximum kind of two, any more than that. And I think um, buy one of their watercolour paper ones, which are just fantastic, but more expensive. And I'm not sure if they come uh, this big. This is an underwater cave, if you kind of hadn't worked out what it was already. It, or it it's also could be some blue smudges. I actually had the most fun with this one. I'm not sure if it's the most successful, but I had the most fun trying to work out with shapes and, and trying to do the light, um, which comes up in a bit. And yeah, this definitely took a lot of layers because it, I was trying to get, you know, depth of this swimming through an underground, underground, underwater cave. Uh, back to the shipwreck. I'm trying to think, see, I haven't planned anything. I just fancied talking for 10 minutes and then didn't realise how long the 10 minutes were. Uh, I'm not sure this one was successful. It was a difficult one to do. I, I, I like it. It looks like a shipwreck at least. Back to the Merle. So, like on Carolina, that's like that pinky purple um, with white tips. This is kind of a big chunk of Merle that I'm drawing in the foreground. And there's some sponges and lots of little bits of Merle and Coraline algae. And I've put a few feathery things in there. Trying to get a bit of seaweed kind of stuff because that will be growing there too because it's still in the photic zone but you can see that there's a lot of paint dabs and uh, I don't think I'd ever want to paint a merle background that's bigger than that because it would take absolutely absolutely ages so I'm now just putting the white tips on all of the bits of merle um, which is really characteristic of it so definitely didn't want to leave that out um, I'm just trying to think what else to say. Ah, this was fun. So um, I had this idea from the start. Um, I wanted to do a jellyfish bloom, which is what is coming up. And I didn't want to get out and find my, what's it called? The white, the white paste that you add on that's like uh, rubber that protects you, protects it so that when you paint over it, it doesn't smudge. Anyway, that thing. I didn't want to do that for a jellyfish bloom because it would be absolutely ages of painting all the jellyfish in to then take them all off and paint over it again. So I thought, what can I do? Well, let me try putting my Poshka pens on top. You can see me struggling with the white a bit here. I think by the amount of coats of paint that this bit of paper had had, it was just struggling to hold anything um, because the, the paper was a bit mushy. Um, but I think, I think it came out came out really cool uh, I think this was my most successful one and I really do kind of want to do a big giant painting of a jellyfish bloom I think it would take me absolutely ages but after attempting this I, I think I kind of want to come up for the challenge because it's just really cool and I think it's it's a good effect and I like the fact that I'm mixing the watercolors and the Poshka paints I think that's definitely something I want to do uh, in the future for sure Oh, these are baby jellies. Look at the baby jellies. Back to the wreck where it seems to be I always run out of things to say. How's your week going? I know you can't answer me, but technically, don't forget, you can always tweet me at Marine Mumbles. If you want to discuss anything uh, marine related about your life, let me know. Always up for a marine conversation. Um... Yeah, this next bit with the lines, I knew it was darker in the background and I kind of wanted to push the background back, but I didn't know how to do it. So I, you know, it's a sketchbook and gave it a whirl. I'm not sure this technique with the two dark bits in the corner was the most successful, but I also don't think it's terrible. I don't think I'd do it again, but it was fun uh, while I did it. This was if I tried to do the lines again here, I don't know why, and then instantly decided that I needed to cover it up. Um, this was difficult. I am not sure 
if I overworked it. If I'm if I'm perfectly honest, let me know as you watch it what you think. At what point does this little mini painting look at its best? Um, I like how it came out at the end. I really do. But there was a bit in the middle where I didn't know if I should leave it, um, and I didn't. I never really do these squiggle things, um, but I really enjoyed doing kind of squiggles. I always lift the, the brush up whenever I'm doing lines like that, rather than do continuous squiggles. I just always thought it looked a bit better and it was just something my art teachers kind of taught me. But I quite like this squiggle, it's quite stylized. I liked it. Uh, now the tricky bit with this is trying to get those little two patches of white that's left there to look like that's where the light is shining in from and that's the kind of the point where I don't know if I overworked it because I decided to go back in with my bright blue Poshka pen which wasn't quite as bright blue as I wanted um, and, and kind of do like a ray light effect um, yeah well we'll see how it ends up I know obviously I've seen how it ends up but it's interesting re-watching yourself draw things because you can kind of see the stages you go through and if you pause it you can see this is the bit that I might have overworked it at I wanted I didn't think that it looked like those lights were peeking in from behind a cave it just looked like they were kind of coming out of rock from nowhere so I wanted to darken up the front and, and make the cave walls a very like solid thing that like couldn't just randomly shine from um, and then with that make that bit that is peeking through a lot smaller so emphasize the like the mini caves that are behind that big initial structure it was definitely definitely the most fun to do and I like the style that it came out in um, but again let me know at what point you think that one looked best and then I really do need to buy some washi tape uh, normally a, cup, a, a bit of sellotape that you rub on your arm a few times beforehand to get rid of some of the stickiness works. It did not work this time, it completely failed um, and ripped up my paper so I think that's an omen that maybe I should stop being so cheap and you know spend a couple of quid on some, on some mini tape but I love these little landscapes in my sketchbook. I think they are really awesome pages to come back to as you're flicking through and seeing them all together, my murky landscapes, um, I think it was genuinely a success. Mm.